Well, it is almost time for Passover. The eight day holiday begins this Monday night at sundown. Jewish families across our area and around the world will mark the holiday with the traditional Passover Seder. It is marked by symbolic foods on a ceremonial plate known as the Seder plate. During the holiday, those who observe follow special dietary rules and several restaurants offer menus tailored for the holiday. Joining us this morning to talk about all of this, Ari Bakovza, the head chef at Dagon, a restaurant on the Upper West Side offering a full Passover menu. Ari, good morning. Thank Hello. you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's talk about some of the special menu items. I, 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 this all looks um, perfect for now. Yeah. And I yeah. just don't want to do anything to ruin it, but I want to <laughs> learn. So tell us what you have here. All right, so we bought all the, uh, the components that go into like a traditional Seder plate. You have the parsley, which um, represents the bitterness that the Israelites went through. We have the eggs, represents the circle of life. The horseradish, the fresh horseradish, again, the bitterness, the lamb, they use the shank, the bone from the shank to put the, uh, it's kind of a violent story, the blood on the doors so the, the angel of death would know to pass over them when he was doing his thing. And then um, the best one that I think, the most tastiest one, the sweetest one is the haroset, which represents the, uh, the mortar that they used to layer the bricks. And that's the one that has so many different applications. You could serve it with pork, you could serve it with duck, with game. I've done it with foie gras before. Wow. And um, it's done poorly often. Hmm. My, my grandmother used to make it and it was a disaster. I, I know we're going to delve in in just a moment, but, sure. but before we do that, I mean, how are these dishes different from sort of your traditional menu at the restaurant? Um, well, they, they, you know, the, the ingredients um, that we eat on Passover, they kind of tell the story. They're symbolic of what the Israelites went through when they were fleeing Egypt. So it's really, you're telling a story through cuisine. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. What did your grandmother do wrong? Lovingly, we <laughs> so, say that. Um, I that, love you, that Grandma. You're, <laughs> that, you're, that you're telling folks at home not to do, potentially. So this, the haros, it's, it's traditionally a mixture of nuts, apples, um, sometimes dried fruit and lots of wine. And what she would do is she would soak it in so much wine that you would put it on your plate and it would look like a murder scene. So I'm like a little, little kid eating it, ca catching a buzz. I'm, I'm looking across the table at my dad. He's like, we're going to McDonald's after this. <laughs> so wow. I said to myself, you know, if, if I ever become a chef, I'm gonna definitely nail this one. And so I think I have it nailed. You guys tell me we have Walnuts, we have apples, dates. Here's the trick, we reduce the wine with some sugar and lemon. And there's a, a culinary term called glaze. And it just kind of glazes everything so you don't get that puddle of, of raw wine going on. All right, so yeah, we'll, show us how to yeah, make it here, right, the, the proper this, way. Let's get this dance We'll take going. notes. <laughs> so we have the walnuts, we have the apples. My pops likes to make it with with dates, so I gotta represent pops a little yep. bit. Oh, nice. We have some dried figs, it's always nice. Here's that lovely reduction I was talking about. So it's almost like a, a balsamic reduction. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a much yeah. thicker consistency than it would be just regular red wine. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it definitely ha resembles balsamic, and it's got that sweet and tart thing going on. That, uh, and what was the powder you put on? That was a little bit of baharat, which is a North African spice that has uh, mostly cinnamon, cinnamon, coriander, like fall spices. And uh, a little more lemon, and I'll let you do the honors. That's pomegranate molasses. I'll step back. Okay, a little okay. drizzle of that. Like we that did a makes drum roll. everything better. Pomegranate it's molasses. It's just concentrated pomegranate juice. Okay, and now how much do you want on here? Because eh, a little whatever drizzle. you don't, tell don't me, be I'm scared. Don't be probably scared. the opposite's gonna You're happen. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be good. Oh. No, too much. <laughs> don't, oh, don't you dare. You know it. You know it. You're good right there. It wasn't, um, I was expecting a real nice zigzag on top right, there, right. but. Um, so, then what we're going to, sorry. That's all right. And what we're going to do, I, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Like, uh, Elaine jumped five feet into the air. <laughs> we're we're glad we weren't on camera. We're going to mix it up, right? And ideally, you would make this the day before so that all that goodness kind of soaks into it. Mm -hmm. And then, lo and behold, I have some prepared for you guys to wow, taste. Wow, that. that looks great. Here, Doug, and what, you can have that. What they do in my family is yeah. they'll take a little bit of the horseradish and gives it that, that spicy, sweet combination that's really, really nice. I'm going to try and get a view you of eat on cam? Yeah. to our camera. Yeah. And then the final touch 
is some of that sweetness, that pomegranate reduction. Have at it, kids. All right. Is, so is it, is it uh, considered a side dish? Does it accompany? It, it goes on the Seder plate. Okay. And, and it's one of the components of, of the Seder plate. Mmm. That is fantastic. Like mm -hmm. Thank you much. Thank what you a, much. As I talk with my mouth, no. excellent, excellent. <laughs> it's so, all good. All good. <laughs> the, the meaning behind each dish at Passover, um, does it make what you do, the tradition of what you do, uh, last through the years? If you have a trick that you think adds something to a dish, you keep it in families for generations? Yeah, I mean, I think every family has its own different traditions. Um, different dishes that they like to do. And, you know, there's also very important messages with, with Passover, especially with the matzah. Like, you know, they didn't have time to let the bread rise mm -hmm. so because they were fleeing um, uh, slavery, mm -hmm. right? But the matzah also represents like a time for us not to puff our chests out and be egotistical, right. kind of to humble ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit. So a lot, a lot of craziness going on outside in the world today. And I think this is not only like a beautiful story, but it's a very important story. Yeah. All right, uh, we can't thank you enough for being here and for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank we appreciate you. your time. Great thank to you. meet you. Uh, Dagon is on Broadway and 91st Street if there, you'd like to visit. Yep, there's still time to order their Seder plate before Passover begins on Monday night. We'll be right back. And I